Is the rapture of the church before the tribulation called the pre-trib rapture too new to be true? Was it invented by a guy named Darby back in the 1830s who heard it from an ecstatic teenage girl? Or did the early church fathers actually teach about the rapture happening before the tribulation? We brought our friend here, Lee Brainerd, who is a fantastic author. Lee, thank I've you for being here. been yeah. reading his old Planet Shaken series. It's a fiction series that teaches about Bible prophecy, but he's an, also an expert in the ancient languages and ancient documents. And you, Lee, have been digging back into the early church fathers. Maybe you can tell us what does the early church fathers mean and tell us what you discovered. Well, the early church fathers are the believers who are after the generation of the apostles. That um, You're going to have people as early as uh, Polycarp and Irenaeus and people all the way up into the uh, fourth century like Ephraim of Syria. And it goes actually goes on up towards the Byzantine era. So you got about four or five centuries here of early church fathers who the farther into the church you went, the, the more the removed that they got from the New Testament. But there's still value there. Um, in my estimation, not only for learning the language of the New Testament, but primarily for finding information on what the early church believed on the gospel and on prophecy. And sometimes they had to clarify their beliefs, so they got together in councils. That's right. And even the apostles themselves had to make sure that they were focusing on the core message of the gospel. But these guys challenged one another, they encouraged one another, and they brought clarity to the early beliefs. That's exactly right. When you were at the conference, Lieb gave this fantastic presentation about a few of the early church fathers, one in particular, and as you dived into his writings in the Greek and translated, yeah. you found a pre-trib rapture teaching in the church fathers hundreds and hundreds of years before Darby, correct? That's exactly right, yes. I was actually doing study on the Greek word apostasia as, as it relates to 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 3. And while I'm doing this study, I stumbled across a rapture passage in uh, Ephraim of Syria's uh, 55 Beatitudes, and I about fell off my chair. And if you want more information on these actual passages, you can find them on my website, which is soothkeep.info. I don't have these passages memorized, or I just rattle them off. <laughs> but um, I, I actually, in studying him, I, I found a, a pre-trib rapture passage, and then I, I went and investigated his 150 plus Greek works, uh, and I found dozens of rapture passages. Mm. Ten of them were crystal clear, and I found 20 plus passages that are clear rapture passages, but the context wouldn't define if it was pre-trib or, or not. Did it use the actual word rapture? Because that's what most people say, I can't find the rapture in the Bible, mm -hmm. even though in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, it's, it's harpazo, meaning to be caught up, or rapio, yes. which is a Latin transliterated into English where we get the word rapture. Uh, when I watched your presentation, you had the word rapture there. Is Did they actually use the Latin and, and, and the harpazo, the Greek, to use for the word rapture in those passages? Absolutely. In some of the uh, Latin works, they do use uh, rapio and the noun form of the same. And in, in the Greek, they use harpage and harpazo. So. Wow. It, it's fascinating to me that this concept that the Lord is coming, obviously the apostles said to be on the alert, to look for His coming. So they believed He was coming and that that could happen at any time. Obviously He has tarried for 2,000 That's years, right. but we still have excitement. And so there's early fathers understood that. I always point out and you know when Paul went to the church of Thessalonica his his Bible 101 or Gospel 101 included the message that Jesus is coming and they were Absolutely. they were thrilled about that message. Absolutely. That's one thing I see too whether I'm studying the early church fathers or whether I'm studying the medieval heretics like the Polit the Polycans, the Albigenses, the Waldenses, whether I'm studying the Reformation churches or modern evangelicals all those people that really love the Word of God, and we would put them in a category of being literalists and biblicists, they were always looking for the coming of the Lord. They may not have had all their T's crossed right and I's dotted right when it comes to eschatology and prophecy, but they were looking for and longing for the coming of the Lord Jesus. What's well, our blessed hope is it says in Titus 2, right? I mean, that's why I think we get excited about prophecy. And when we hear people say, no, the church is going to have to live through the tribulation. You're just going to be suffering and dying and you got to go like a Protestant purgatory to get yourself to the end, to get to heaven. Yet, when we go back to the teachings of Jesus Christ Himself and uh, the Apostles and of course the early church fathers, they had that hope. Now the early church fathers lived through a terrible time of persecution right. too, right? So they had that hope to keep them going and we have that hope today, right? Absolutely. And what's interesting to me on your observation, once in a while I've, I've read people or heard people say um, that we have to go through the tribulation so the bride can be purified. And I'm thinking to myself, you got to be kidding. 
If the blood of Christ isn't going to purify us, yeah. a whip and persecution and jail and get your burned in the fire, that's, uh, getting your head cut off, that's not going to purify no, you. No, no. That, that doesn't all. purify. There will be many martyrs that go, come out of that period of time. We know that yeah. from Revelation. What, what is it going to happen now if, um, if the people have been saying, Lord, Lord, and all of a sudden the rapture happens and they didn't go up? Mm. Mm-hmm. This is a terrifying situation. I, I have people that I suspect are not saved. But I'm going to guess also that some of them are going to go up and I'll be surprised. And there's probably going to be people that I'm expecting to go up and Mm. are not going to go up. Um, But the really the exhortation here is that every one of us should examine ourselves daily. Every one of us. You know, Paul, it, it's scriptural to examine yourself, test yourself, see if you be of the faith. Now, the, the, the rub on this is that this is what every real believer does. I mean, probably a few times a year I look at myself and wonder, are you even saved? Well, of course I'm saved. Of course you are. Yeah. But, it, it, but it's the people that don't examine themselves that is the problem. When you remember the upper room, all the disciples were saying, Lord, is it me? Lord, is it me? And who's the one that didn't even ask? The one, the one that was not saved. Amen. Mm, well, folks, wow. you can see why Lee is a fantastic, not only writer, but also preacher and researcher. Can you tell them one more time how they can re- check out your website? Yeah, absolutely. My website is soothkeep.info. That's S-O-O-T-H-K-E-E-P. That's Old English for Truth Fortress. I'm also Soothkeep uh, on Twitter. And uh, boy, I'd love to hear from you if you got questions. <laughs>